you gave a lot of praise to the city of Cleveland. So I just want to start with what this city has meant to you. Oh, it meant a lot. I mean, city is a uh, Cleveland is a football city, no question about it. Uh, they advocate fans. They they love their football, and uh, they're behind them 100 percent. You've been here since 2019. What is what has that journey been like for you over the years? It's been great. I mean, having an opportunity to work with this organization, to work with, uh, first of all, John Dorsey and Freddie Kitchens, and then uh, to work with Andrew and Paul, uh, it's been unbelievable. The Hazlons have given us all the support that, that we needed, and they'll continue to do that. And I think the program has been doing nothing but moving forward. You've had big names in your running back room, Nick Chubb highlighting them. Yeah. Uh, all those guys have been, been fantastic. I really believe I got an opportunity to get the most out of everybody except for Kareem so far. I think Kareem has a lot to offer, uh, but I think what he needs to do is uh, dedicate himself to getting all that he can get and don't settle for being who he's been in the past, and I think he'll be a, one hell of a player. What has your philosophy been to try to unlock that from them? Uh, to try to uh, talk to, I would say, first starting with Jacoby Brissett, uh, then to Deshaun, uh, to anyone else that can try to get a hold to him uh, so he can hear uh, someone else's voice other than mine. And, you know, that's all, that's all it can do. When regimes change, a lot of coaches do too. What did it mean to you to be retained in that, in that wave? Well, it was great. I mean, I had an opportunity to be here four years after that. And uh, I, I think everything that they do, the Haslam's, Andrew and Paul, I think it's all moving the uh, – program forward and doing what the what the fans want. I know it's difficult, but I mean, were you surprised that this is the course that's happened and you're not with the team right now? I guess I was more surprised with uh, TC and ADP because they came here with Kevin than, than I was with myself. So uh, that's, that's heartbreaking because those guys, they worked tremendously hard. I, I thought AVP was an unbelievable uh, OC and uh, it's the first time David has made it to the Pro Bowl, you know, in his seven-year career. So uh, TC definitely got all he could from from that group. What's your takeaway, knowing that you're not going to be back next season, but this team has the faces that you've come to to know and probably really admire? My takeaway is uh, for for everyone in that organization, uh, players, everyone uh, that has anything to do with the Cleveland Browns, everything that they do is for moving the program forward and nothing less. This is a business. Uh, they're trying to please their fans in every move that they make, and uh, I think they're going to do that. So what do you think they're making these moves for? I, I think they only make the moves for one thing, to get better, to bring a, a winner. Uh, well, I mean, we won, but to bring a championship here to Cleveland. That's, that's what they make the moves for, in, in my opinion. I asked Kareem Hunt the same thing. I know. For him, this is his hometown, this is where he grew up, but he said even if he doesn't come back here, it would mean a lot to him to see the Browns win a championship. Wherever you go, wherever you end up, is that, do you say, have that same kind of mindset? Of course I want to see the Browns win. Now, if I was with another team, of course I would want to win as well. But uh, I, I love the Browns, I love their fans, I love the players, uh, I love ownership, management. They did nothing but uh, great things for me and, and my family and, and uh, trying to do the same thing for all the Cleveland Brown fans. So no bad blood? Bad blood? Yeah. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, I had an opportunity to be employed by this organization for five years. No bad blood whatsoever. Where do you see yourself going? Uh, well, first of all, March 15th, I'll be 65. So, uh, you know, it, it's not bad not getting up until 8 o'clock. Uh, usually I'm at the facility by 4, 45, 5 o'clock getting my cardio in, uh, but it's, it's not bad. So uh, I don't know what the future holds, but whatever it holds, I'm, I'm ready for it. Do you think that there's more coaching for you? It's a possibility. It, it depends on who get head jobs or maybe offensive coordinator jobs. Uh, but if it is, fine. If it's, if it's not, that's cool too. Where do you see the state of this running backs room? I think the running backs room is going to be fine. Uh, Andrew Berry, I think they do uh, a great job of bringing guys in. Maybe not uh, some that, that, you know, I want it, but it is what it is. They brought in guys who were able to get the job done, and, and that was my job to make sure they get the job done regardless of who they brought in. And uh, I feel pretty good at the job that I did. You were the one name that everyone was just kind of shocked about. 
for you to become such an icon as a running backs coach, as a guy who doesn't normally do media availability, who is kind of on the sidelines and just working really hard with his head down with his guys, does that surprise you that you became so beloved to, to this city? Well, I think uh, they saw my passion like uh, the passion that they have. So it was easy for me to, to fit in. And the guys were being productive uh, no matter who it, who it was. Uh, and it all boils down to uh, Bill Callahan, Scott Peters, and John DeCoster. Those guys did a phenomenal job. Uh, anytime my guys thought they were working hard, when we got to the meeting room, I would show them video of the offensive line. So don't complain about what we do, you know. And uh, they understood the weaknesses and the strengths of the offensive line. Uh, there's no way you can even begin to think you work hard until you saw uh, the offensive line and also you saw a different guy in front of you uh, blocking, but the results were the same. We were still successful. So it, it, was, uh, it was phenomenal the way the three of those guys, uh, coaches got guys to play. It sounds like in that organization there's a lot of people who left lasting impacts in their roles and then in different roles. For you, what do you hope the impact that you left on that organization, on that room, will be? Well, the, the thing that I couldn't do while I was there uh, is get the best out of Kareem. If they bring him back, I hope the, uh, the next coach will be able to get the best out of Kareem. Uh, as a coach, all you want to do is to make a player better, uh, but I wasn't able to get him to not be the last guy in meetings, uh, not to be out uh, at practice on time. Uh, Kareem's a hell of a player, but this is a team game, you know, and, and I tried to use every avenue that I could with uh, Jacoby Brissett, also Deshaun, those guys talking to him. But timing in this business is everything. Uh, during the spring, we had a, a phenomenal uh, spring with Marquise and Deshaun. Unfortunately, Marquise uh, had the blood clots and stuff during the summer and wasn't able to uh, practice. But man, was spring dynamic. It was, it was so awesome uh, to see the connection on the deep balls and, and stuff. And uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. You mentioned him, and I know you don't work directly with him, but you work with him a lot. Deshaun Watson is looking to come back from that shoulder injury, and there's question marks on what he's going to look like. Can he put a full season together with what you've seen of him and how he's been able to work in that running backs room and how that offense wants to operate? Where do you see the future with Deshaun Watson on the Cleveland Browns? Well, the future with Deshaun Watson is, should be similar to, uh, to Joe. Deshaun is a passer. Okay, first and foremost, he is a, he's a passer. Uh, the system, and, and Kevin felt real comfortable calling plays for Joe because Kevin's a hell of a play caller. You know, people constantly uh, ask the question, should Kevin give up play calling? I think he's a hell of a play caller. I mean, he don't drop balls, he don't fumble, he don't throw interceptions. Uh, he studies his ass off uh, in terms of knowing the situation, knowing uh, the time to call certain plays, uh, I think that's one thing he definitely does not need to do. I mean, you take him back to Kirk Cousins, that's kind of the mindset he had uh, when, when he uh, had Joe. That's who Deshaun is. I mean, Deshaun is a runner, but he's a runner by nature. Uh, we don't have to create runs for him. Uh, of course, special situations, 30 zones or whatever you can do, but Deshaun is a, uh, is a passer. So Kevin, if his game plan is like it was with, uh, with, with Joe, we'll be just fine, or the Browns will be just fine. <laughs> I, you're always going to be a part of the Cleveland Browns, I feel like, and one of the things I, I think that, that iconic beard is what everyone talks about. You gotta tell me, what, what's, the, what's the beard? What, like, what goes into it? Because I gotta ask the fun questions. Look, you control the things that you can control. And, and my facial hair or my hair, that's, that's the only thing I control. You know, that's, that's it. So I take, take pride in that. I think Cleveland takes pride in your beard. <laughs> <laughs> What's your message to this city, the fan base, the organization, as you move on to the next chapter and you're hoping that you leave something behind with this organization? I think the fans should understand that uh, the Haslam's, Andrew, Paul, 
they're doing everything right, in my opinion. I mean, they're trying to move this program forward constantly. Sometimes you're a part of the uh, problem, sometimes you're a part of the solution. Uh, sometimes things just have to transpire in order to, to move uh, the, the program forward. This is a business. You know, uh, I, I know Alex Van Pelt did everything he possibly could uh, in his time here. Two, uh, two out of the four years, we had winning seasons. He called a, a winning playoff game, but for whatever reason, they think they need needed to move on. It is what it is. I, I know they know people have families. They don't take anything lightly. Uh, so everything that they do, they think they're doing it for the betterment of this football team. And we as coaches, we understand that. And we harbor no ill feelings. You guys understand it's a business. There's some young guys on this team, though, that, you know, might be upset, might be, this might be the first time they've seen something like this. Did you have anything to say to them? Is that something that you've talked to them about? These young guys, they have a job to do. And if they can't get the job done, it'll happen to them as well. So every day you go out, you go out to get better. That's what every coach, whether it's an offensive coach, special teams coach, defensive coach, that's what they try to get these guys to see. You can't wait until tomorrow. You have to try to get it done today. And I think that's what uh, every coach uh, tried to do, get those guys to improve on the regular. You can't have an off day, especially when you're talking about the playoffs. You know, uh, it, it just can't happen. So you always have to be locked in, dialed in, and trying to get the, the most out of the day.